Welcome back. It's December 13th, 2023. And today we'll navigate through the realms of politics, finance, international policy, and technological innovation. From the rising prominence of cryptocurrency in U.S. presidential politics to FTX's epic battle against a colossal IRS claim, a China's groundbreaking blockchain-based digital identity system, Real DID, we'll also explore the emergence of the Universal Privacy Alliance as a beacon of digital privacy and delve into the UK's cautious embrace of AI in the judicial system. Lastly, we'll celebrate Mistral AI's remarkable financial feat in the AI industry. Fasten your seatbelts as we embark on this enlightening journey through the digital landscape. In the landscape of U.S. politics, cryptocurrency has emerged as a significant talking point among presidential hopefuls. Candidates from diverse political backgrounds are converging on the issue, challenging existing regulatory frameworks and the current administration's approach. Notably, the candidates are scrutinizing the roles of Biden and Trump in shaping crypto policies, questioning their effectiveness and suitability in guiding the sector's future. This discourse notably included a critique of the government's handling of Tornado Cash. That's a decentralized cryptocurrency mixer we've talked about on this show. And in doing so, they conveyed their general attitude towards regulation in the crypto space. The event, titled Stand with Crypto, became a platform for presidential hopefuls to express their views and propose potential legislative changes. This reflects a growing awareness of cryptocurrency's relevance in national politics and its potential to shape economic and regulatory landscapes. The candidates, while diverse in their political affiliations, share a common skepticism towards the current administration's handling of crypto. This sentiment resonates with a significant portion of the population, particularly those distrustful of government intervention and overreach. It highlights a shift in political discourse where cryptocurrency and digital assets are no longer fringe topics. They're central to discussions on economic freedom and individual liberty. The increasing prominence of cryptocurrency in political debates signifies a critical juncture in the intersection of technology, economics, and governance. The candidates' focus on the issue not only challenges the status quo, it proposes a re-evaluation of how digital assets are perceived and regulated at the national level. Their critiques and proposals reflect a broader call for a more nuanced and informed approach towards cryptocurrency, acknowledging its potential to redefine financial systems and individual autonomy. The discussion around Tornado Cash in particular exemplifies the complexity of regulating decentralized technologies and the fine balance between ensuring security and maintaining individual freedoms. The event's emphasis on proposed legislative changes indicates a growing recognition of the need for informed and pragmatic policies that support innovation while also addressing legitimate concerns around security and misuse. The engagement of presidential hopefuls with the cryptocurrency debate marks a significant shift in political narratives. It mirrors the evolving landscape of digital assets, and in doing so, it underscores the importance of a thoughtful and informed approach towards regulation, balancing the need for oversight with the principles of economic freedom and individual liberty. This evolving dialogue promises to shape the future of cryptocurrency policy and its role in the broader economic and political frameworks. As we navigate the political waves of crypto, let's shift gears to another high-stakes arena. Picture this. FTX has a showdown with the IRS and their $24 billion tax claim. The cryptocurrency exchange FTX has been embroiled in a significant legal tussle with the Internal Revenue Service. Now, the IRS has demanded a staggering $24 billion in unpaid taxes. The IRS claim has been a major point of contention, as FTX argues that this enormous tax bill is obstructing the process of recovering funds for its users. FTX's stance is that the IRS's demand is exorbitantly high and unrealistic, complicating the already challenging situation for the exchange and its creditors. In a striking turn of events, FTX has even labeled the IRS's claim as something out of, quote, Alice in Wonderland. They're suggesting that the demand is not just excessive, it's also absurd and disconnected from reality. The exchange is contesting the IRS's position, arguing the claim lacks a solid legal basis and is disproportionately large compared to the exchange's financial realities. The IRS's enormous tax demand poses a significant threat to the potential recovery of funds by creditors. FTX asserts that if the IRS's claim is upheld, it would substantially reduce or even eliminate any meaningful recovery that creditors might expect from the bankruptcy proceedings. This situation puts the exchange's creditors in a precarious position, as the resolution of the tax claim could directly impact the amount of money they recover. FTX's dispute with the IRS raises several concerns and questions about the regulatory environment surrounding cryptocurrencies and digital exchanges. 
The exchange's pushback against the IRS can be seen as a manifestation of the broader tension between digital financial platforms and traditional regulatory bodies. This case could set a precedent for how tax claims are handled in the crypto industry, which is still navigating its way through regulatory and legal complexities. The FTX and IRS debacle paints a vivid picture in the ongoing friction between innovative digital entities and established government institutions. The case draws attention to a fundamental issue in the cryptocurrency world, the clash between the rapid evolution of digital finance and the comparatively slow adaptation of regulatory frameworks. The potential impact of the IRS's claim on creditors is a significant aspect of the situation. If the IRS's demand is upheld, it could set a concerning precedent for other digital exchanges and their users, suggesting government claims could take precedence over the rights and recoveries of individual investors and creditors. The situation could lead to increased wariness among investors regarding the security and stability of their assets and digital platforms. The case itself is emblematic of the growing pains of the crypto sector as it strives to establish itself within the traditional financial ecosystem. It reflects the challenges faced by digital entities in navigating complex and, frankly, antiquated tax laws and regulations. The outcome of this case will be closely watched, as it could have far-reaching implications for the crypto industry and its ongoing struggle for legitimacy and acceptance within the broader financial system. From the heated battlefields of tax claims, we journey east to China, where blockchain meets digital identity. The real DID system isn't just about technology. It's a narrative about privacy, security, and the balance of power in the digital age. China's technological advancement in identity verification, the real DID system, is making headlines. It's being spearheaded by the Ministry of Public Security and developed in collaboration with the Blockchain-Based Service Network, or BSN. This initiative marks a significant step in the country's digital evolution. The real DID system is designed to authenticate the identities of China's 1.4 billion citizens. It operates on a blockchain platform, ensuring enhanced security and privacy. The system allows users to anonymously register and log into various websites. This is achieved using decentralized identifiers, or DID addresses, and private keys. This method ensures users' personal data remains distinct and secure from their business transactions. This development is particularly noteworthy as it represents the first national-level application of blockchain technology in real-name identity verification. So China wins that race. One of the key motivations behind the real DID system is to align with China's existing policies on digital identity. The country has been progressively tightening its regulations on social media and online platforms. One noticeable aspect of these regulations is the requirement for major social media content creators, especially those with large followings, to disclose their real names. This policy aims to bring more transparency and accountability to the digital sphere, particularly in the realms of content creation and dissemination. However, the introduction of the real DID system is not without its critics. Concerns have been raised about the potential for increased surveillance and the implications this has for personal privacy. The use of blockchain technology in this context is something of a double-edged sword. While it does offer enhanced security and efficiency, it also raises questions about the extent to which such technologies could be used for state monitoring and control. Despite these concerns, the real DID system is a clear indication of China's commitment to integrating cutting-edge technologies into its governance and societal frameworks. The move signals a growing trend of governments exploring blockchain technology for various applications, ranging from financial transactions to identity verification. The real DID system represents a complex interplay of technological innovation, regulatory compliance, and societal impact. Its rollout will be closely watched by both national and international observers, because it could set a precedent for how blockchain technology is employed in large-scale, government-led initiatives in the future. China's real DID story opens doors to a broader conversation. Enter the Universal Privacy Alliance, champions of digital privacy, ready to redefine our online world. Let's dive into this alliance of digital warriors, standing tall against privacy encroachments. In the realm of digital rights, the formation of the Universal Privacy Alliance marks a significant moment. The alliance is composed of NIM, Protocol Labs, Filecoin Foundation, Oasis, and Aztec. It represents a joint effort to advocate for privacy in the digital world. The UPA's creation was inspired by Edward Snowden and officially established in Switzerland. It aims to address the growing concerns over digital data protection and privacy rights. A key aspect of the UPA's mission is to challenge laws like the EIDAS and the Digital Services Act. 
These laws pose threats to end-to-end -end encryption and Web3 business model innovation. This brings them into alliance with the United Nations Declaration of Digital Privacy as a fundamental human right. In doing so, they emphasize the need for privacy in both online and offline spaces. Harry Halpin is a leading figure in the UPA. He underscores the urgency for privacy-focused technologies, stressing the importance of security, anonymity, and informed consent on the internet. The UPA's approach is centered around privacy by design. This is meant to ensure technology inherently respects privacy and security. With an initial funding of $150,000, the UPA plans to coordinate advocacy efforts, educate policymakers, and support smaller organizations in their quest for privacy-centric practices. This move signifies a collective commitment towards protecting digital privacy rights, aiming to create a digital environment free from excessive surveillance and exploitation. The establishment of the Universal Privacy Alliance is a clear response to the increasing encroachment on individual privacy in the digital age. The coalition of major Web3 entities is not just a symbolic gesture. It's a practical step towards influencing policy and technological development in favor of privacy rights. The UPA's focus on combating restrictive laws and promoting privacy by design is a testament to the growing realization that privacy is not just a feature. It's a fundamental right. Their efforts extend beyond mere advocacy. They include tangible actions like funding and organizing to actively shape the landscape of digital privacy. This alliance, with its emphasis on unified action and inclusion of smaller entities, represents a new wave of digital rights activism. It's a reminder, in an increasingly digitized world, the fight for privacy is more relevant than ever. It requires the collective effort of all stakeholders to safeguard our digital freedoms. Now, speaking of reshaping landscapes, how about AI in UK courts? It's a blend of opportunity and caution. Judges must learn to balance the scales of justice with the weight of AI technology. Let's explore this delicate dance of law and artificial intelligence. Judicial guidance issued in the UK warns judges in England and Wales about the use of artificial intelligence in legal proceedings. This guidance is meant for magistrates, tribunal panel members, and judges. It emphasizes the responsible use of AI while highlighting the potential risks. AI can be useful for administrative tasks like summarizing texts or drafting emails. Its use is advised against for legal research and analysis. This is due to the possibility of inaccuracies, incompleteness, or misleading information. Sir Geoffrey Voss is the country's second most senior judge. He joined other senior judges in expressing that AI offers great opportunities for the judicial system, but also requires proper understanding and careful application. The guidance notes that AI tools might draw on law from foreign jurisdictions, particularly the United States. In doing so, they don't accurately represent English law. Judges are also warned about the privacy risks. They're advised to avoid sharing sensitive case-specific information with public AI chatbots. In addition to these concerns, the guidance points out the risks associated with submissions by litigants who might rely on AI tools due to lack of professional advice. These include the use of deepfake technology and inaccuracies in citing legal authorities. The guidance encourages judges to scrutinize submissions that may have used a chatbot. Overall, the guidance acknowledges the potential of AI to improve the efficiency of the legal system. It also demonstrates the importance of judges remaining personally responsible for their work and supervising any AI use by clerks or assistants. It also mentions AI will not be used to aid in any decision-making until there is absolute confidence in its reliability, which to my mind seems like it's a long way off. The issuance of this guidance reflects growing concerns about the misuse of AI in legal contexts and the need for a cautious, informed approach. By highlighting both the possibilities and the pitfalls of AI, the guidance seeks to foster a responsible integration of technology into the judicial system. It shows their commitment to maintaining the integrity of legal processes while exploring the benefits of technological advancements. This development represents a pragmatic approach, one that balances the need for innovation with the necessity of upholding legal standards and public trust. And as we talk about AI shaping our world, don't forget to hit that like, follow, and subscribe button. Get notifications for the latest on AI and crypto. Now let's witness a major shift in AI dynamics with Mistral's AI $415 million raise, a story of ambition and innovation in the AI arena. Mistral AI is a Paris-based company that's challenging giants like OpenAI and Anthropic. They recently closed a substantial funding round, drawing significant attention in the AI industry. This Series A funding amounted to $415 million, propelling Mistral's valuation to an impressive $2 billion. 
This financial achievement comes just six months after their initial $112 million seed round. Leading the investment charge was Andreas and Horowitz, a name synonymous with major tech funding. They were joined by Lightspeed Venture Partners, Salesforce, BNP Parabas, GMAGCM, General Catalyst, Elad Gill, and Conviction. Mistral's rapid accumulation of capital highlights the exploding interest and investment in the AI sector. Notably, Mistral AI is carving its niche with foundational models. This includes Mistral 7B and Mistral 8X7B. Both were released under the Apache 2.0 open source license. Their approach to AI development and distribution is a breath of fresh air, especially in the field often dominated by proprietary technologies. Additionally, Mistral AI is actively participating in shaping the EU's AI Act. They advocate for exemptions for foundational models, focusing regulation more on direct use cases. This involvement indicates a broader vision beyond just product development, encompassing a role in the regulatory landscape of AI technologies. The AI industry is witnessing a meteoric rise in investments, with Mistral AI being a prime example. Their massive funding round is a signal of the growing confidence in AI's potential. The involvement of high-profile investors like Andreas and Horowitz and backing from tech giants like Salesforce and PMP Parabas underscore the industry's confidence in Mistral's approach and potential. Mistral's advocacy in the EU's AI Act discussions is particularly noteworthy. Their influence in shaping legislation reflects a proactive stance in the ethical and practical deployment of AI technologies. This move aligns with a growing awareness for the need for responsible AI development and deployment balancing innovation with regulatory considerations. The open source nature of Mistral's foundational models is also a crucial aspect. This approach democratizes access to advanced AI technologies, fostering a collaborative environment in the AI community. It's a striking contrast to the more closed proprietary models of their competitors and could herald a shift towards more open and accessible AI development. Mistral AI's recent funding success and strategic moves in the AI landscape reflect a dynamic shift in how AI technologies are funded, developed, and regulated. This Paris-based startup is not just raising funds, it's raising the bar for what's possible in AI, setting new standards in innovation, collaboration, and regulatory involvement. Today, we explore diverse facets of digital transformation and innovation. The engagement of U.S. presidential candidates with cryptocurrency reflects a significant shift in the political narrative, acknowledging the role of digital assets in shaping future economic and regulatory frameworks. FTX's legal battle with the IRS highlights the ongoing challenges and complexities faced by digital finance platforms in navigating existing regulatory structures. China's real DID system integrates blockchain technology with identity verification. This opens new possibilities for security and efficiency, while also raising concerns about privacy and state control. The formation of the Universal Privacy Alliance illustrates a concerted effort to safeguard digital privacy rights in an increasingly surveilled digital world. The UK's cautious approach to AI and legal proceedings speaks to the need for the balanced integration of technology in sensitive sectors. Mistral AI's remarkable funding success demonstrates the growing confidence and interest in AI technologies, marking a dynamic shift in the industry. Together, these stories paint a vivid picture of our world that's at the crossroads of digital transformation, where innovation, regulation, and societal impact converge in shaping our future.